So during the height of the pandemic, there were many patients who were hesitant or strongly against getting the COVID vaccine and carrying out safe practices. How do you plan on remaining a compassionate physician when you encounter patients who are unwilling to accept your medical advice? Yeah, so um, I I think it's a difficult situation to be in, um, but I um i am very uncomfortable welcome to the med school interview season yeah that was me before i had any practice with interviewing or gotten any advice on the interviewing process at all this was actually a question that was posed to me by my mic professor when i was practicing with her doing a mock interview so she threw this question at me and in my mind I was like What are Saturdays for? Sunday, Saturday, Monday, No, uh, no, what else are they for? Saturday. It's a fairly challenging question and I don't know how to answer it. I managed to pull it off and the mock interview went well, but at the end of this video I'm actually going to share with you guys how I went about answering this question because that was a good question that she threw at me there. Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ni. I am currently a first year medical student and I'm here to be your buddy during the med school application process and beyond. A lot of you guys enjoyed my secondary application mini series, so I am back with another one and this time I'm going to be divulging everything that I know about the med school interviews. This is going to be an eight part series and here's what you can expect moving forward. In part one, that's this video you already clicked on it so you know what it's about but in part two i'm going to be talking about what i did to prepare what my schedule was like as well as sharing the interview prep resources that i use i have so so many so this is the one that you don't want to miss i'm also going to actually be offering mock interviews to you guys so stay tuned to see how you can request for a mock interview with me in part three i'm going to be talking about some commonly asked questions and how to go about answering them and then parts four through eight i'm going to to do a little med school interview Yelp review type thing for the schools that I interviewed at. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification to be alerted when these videos come out. All right, let's just get into it. So it seems like this year, a lot of schools will still be doing virtual interviews. So if you're interested in finding out about your school in the description box down below, I will link a document from the AAMC that kind of lists out all of the medical schools in the US and whether or not they're planning on doing a virtual interview this year. I think that's a good reference point so you guys can start preparing ahead to see whether you might need to buy plane tickets or if it's just going to be through zoom if you haven't been to a med school interview before or don't know much about it i just want to share with you what the general layout of the day is going to look like because i for sure did not know what to expect so interview day is going to start with a presentation portion this is where you're going to get a welcome most likely from the dean of admissions then the different student offices will come to speak to you like student affairs or the diversity inclusion office and student health and wellness and then in addition to that they'll also give you an overview of the curriculum they might talk about financial aid and in my experience we also had an opportunity to ask faculty questions following that we have a med student panel this is where we can off the record ask med students questions about the school and what their experience is like and after the med student panel we have our interviews so sometimes you'll be given a time slot where you're going to be doing your interviews because you'll be broken up into like kind of breakout rooms with your interviewers or with the other interviewees who are in the group. That's something to look out for because there is a possibility that not everyone will be doing their interviews at the same time. All right, let's move on to the different interview formats. The very traditional type of interview format is the one-on-one -on -one interview where it's just going to be you and another interviewer. This person might be the dean of admission. Um, it might be another faculty, a practicing physician, another medical student, or even a community member. Typically, these interviews will last anywhere from 10, I've heard, to 45 minutes. The longest one that I had went 30 minutes. And in this type of format, your interviewers can come in with predetermined questions that the school wants someone to ask or that they have come up with, or it can be a more conversational type 
of one-on-one interview. I've definitely experienced both and the conversational one I loved a lot more. So that is the one-on-one interviews. Another type you might encounter is the panel interview. This is where you're going to have a panel of interviewers and then you as the interviewee. And they will take turns asking you questions. So my tip here is to make sure that you are being respectful to all of them and making sure that you look at each one when you are answering the question and not just at the person who posed the question to you. The next category is group interviews. I personally did not experience group interviews, but from what I've heard, some of the tips that I can relay it would be to make sure that you still pay attention to what other people are saying and try to build off of it if you can and really not trying to dominate the conversation. Especially when you are asked to work in a team, you really do want to be a team player and not trying too hard to show them that you are a leader. So working collaboratively and being mindful of the other applicants and trying to help. Leadership is such a complicated topic and there are many ways to demonstrate leadership skills rather than being very demanding and being like, you do this and you do that and getting upset when people don't do things your way. Just something to keep in mind if you do encounter groups interviews and I'll get to the MMIs in a minute but in these three types of interviewing formats your interview can be categorized as open file semi-open file or closed file. These are things that you might not know until the day of the interview, but it's still important to kind of keep in mind what these things mean and how to alter your interviewing strategy given the nature of the interview. An open file interview is where they have complete access to your application and they have reviewed it ahead of time prior to interviewing you. A semi-open file is where they will most likely have access to your application except for maybe your stats or certain parts of your application will be locked down so the interviewer will not be able to see certain parts of your application and then closed file is they have not seen your application at all prior to interviewing you. My tip for closed file interviews is to not bring up your stats at all during your interview. If they ask you tell me about a challenging time that you've had academically or non-academically and how you overcame it. Uh, don't bring up your stats. You have such a wealth of life experiences. Bring up one of those examples instead. And for the open file, make sure you're not regurgitating what you wrote in your application because there's a good chance that they might already have a general idea of what you wrote in your application. So try to expand on that and dive a little bit further and deeper into what you wrote. But another thing to keep in mind is that some interviewers might have the ability to read your application but have not actually read your application. I've definitely encountered this before where I can kind of tell that they haven't really looked at my application even though they have it right in front of them. So in an open file interview, don't assume that they already know everything that you wrote in your application. So make sure to emphasize the important points that you really want to drive home through your interview. Finally, the last format of interviewing is our beloved MMIs. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews and these are mini stations that you'll be placed in and you'll be asked a question or to do a certain task. MMIs I like to think of as your wild card. You don't really know what you are going to get. You might get traditional 101 type questions but you might also encounter ethical scenarios, you might be asked to play a game, some really random question like if you were a cookie, what type of cookie would you be? There might also be critical thinking type questions or questions about healthcare delivery. I've also heard that some people were asked to work in teams during some of the MMI stations, but given the nature of virtual interviewing, I don't think that's going to be as common. I encountered two forms of MMIs, one where they asked me follow-up questions and one where they gave me a set of questions and I just had to go through them and answer each one via a recording. The second one I would describe as being very Casper-like. The facilitator is just there to make sure there aren't any technical difficulties or any major clarifications that you want to know prior to answering the questions. But the other format I was having an actual dialogue with my facilitator and I really enjoyed that. So you might be wondering 
how many stations or how long do I get for each station and this all varies depending on the school. I'm not sure what in-person interviewing is like but for me while I was doing MMIs um, virtually I had the opportunity to take down notes as the scenarios were being presented to me and um, during the time that is allotted for me to sort of think about the question I wrote down some of the points that I wanted to talk about and I felt like this was very helpful. So if you are able to definitely write down your thoughts and the major points that you want to cover. MMIs I feel like are the hardest to prepare for and I will talk more about how to best prepare for MMIs in part two of this mini series. Finally, you can have the mixed format interview. You might encounter a couple of the different formats of interviews that I talked about earlier. Okay, so let's rewind to how I would go about answering the question that I had at the beginning of the video. Did you want me to answer this in the context of the COVID pandemic? Okay. Wow, that is a very tough question. I think I'm going to need a minute to think about this one. Is that okay? There are so many layers to this, and I'm not really sure what I would do if I was a currently practicing physician and I encountered the situation, but I just want to walk you through what my thought process is at the moment. I think a lot of patients' fears comes from being unfamiliar or being misinformed about a certain situation or a certain topic. And that creates this sense of insecurity and not knowing what to expect or how it's going to impact them. So I would start by asking them, and kind of gathering information to see what their current knowledge is and what their concerns and what those fears are before I start diving into to helping them and to inform them on what the scientific literature is and what our recommendations are. Because sometimes we might, because sometimes their fears might not even be what I would expect. So that's what I would start with doing. And at the same time, I would remind them that I have their best interest in my mind and in the things that I recommend, that I'm really trying to work with them to ensure that they have the best possible health. In addition to that, I think I would try to garner the support and try to collaborate with local community leaders, leaders whom the local patient population would really trust and look up to. I think there is often this sense of mistrust in the medical community that it's very that it's all about money and not really that personal connection and that relationship. So I, I would try to establish that trust through you, um, through collaborating with these community leaders and propose to them possible options and projects that we can work on to try to help these to try to help the patients be more receptive to taking the medical recommendations. But I would really try to look more into this because I do recognize that this is a major cause for physician burnout. And if I want to become a future practicing physician, this is something that I do need to be aware of. So I think it is something that is very important for me to look into and to try to find ways to remain a compassionate physician because I really do want to provide the best care that I can for my future patients. All right, that brings me to the end of this video. While editing this video, I realized just how long the entire recording is. So I'm actually going to be splitting part one up into two parts. So that's a little bit more digestible. So this is part one. The next one, that which will be coming in the next few days, is going to be part 1.5, where I'm going to be giving you guys general tips about interview day. And these are tips that I haven't heard other people mention or talk about. So please stay tuned and bear with me while I work on editing the rest of this video. Med school has been tough and trying to balance YouTube with this is it's a little stressful for sure. That's all for today's video. As always, best wishes, warmest regards. Until next time, bye!